Is it a voltmeter? Is it an ammeter? Is it an ohmmeter? It's all three, just not at the same time. Hello and welcome to Underdog Physics. Today we'll be looking at the multimeter and how to use it for measuring voltage, resistance and current. The first thing to remember about using a multimeter is that one of the ports must always have something plugged into it. This is the common port. Then depending on whether or not you're measuring voltage, current or resistance, you use one of the other two. But the common ground must always have something plugged into it. Let's look at the multimeter a bit more closely. Here is the common ground I mentioned a second ago, and here are the other two ports. Depending on what we want to measure, we'll use the common ground and one of these other two. More about that in a bit. The big central dial allows me to choose what I want to use the multimeter for. Currently, it's set to off. Turning it to the left allows me to measure DC voltage for common batteries, for example and the number stated is the maximum voltage measurable. I've now got it set to 20, which means I can measure a potential difference up to 20 volts. Now it's on 200, so I can measure up to 200 volts, 2000 millivolts, aka two volts. The other is 200 millivolts or 0.2 volts. Turning the dial to the right, I can measure alternating voltage, like mains power, for example, though I don't recommend sticking a multimeter into a plug socket for obvious reasons. This is up to 600 volts alternating and up to 200 volts alternating. Continuing clockwise onto the ammeter settings, I can measure up to 200 microamps, 2000 microamps, and so on, all the way up to 10 whole amps. This is where the topmost input becomes important. You see, you can measure voltage, current or resistance using just the bottom two inputs. Just plug in your leads and swivel the dial to what you need. However, when using these two inputs to measure current, you can only do so for currents of up to 200 milliamps or 0.2 amps. If you want to measure current up to 10 amp, you should use the common ground and the topmost input. If you want to measure greater currents than this, then I'm afraid you'll have to use a different device entirely. Anyway, Back to the dial. The bottom left portion shows us the options for measuring resistances. This is making our multimeter act like an ohmmeter. The different settings allow us to measure up to 200, 2000, 20,000, 200,000 and 2 million ohms. Notice how the screen shows what looks like a number one on the left side. This means our reading is so big it's off the scale and we'll see this again later in the demos. Right now, our multimeter thinks that we've plugged something which has got a massively humongous resistance, which makes sense as we've got nothing plugged in and it's very difficult for any kind of current to flow between the inputs. Let's use our multimeter to check the potential difference between the terminals of a 9 volt battery. First, we plug a wire into the common ground, as we'll always need this one, and one into the next input, which works for pretty much most things. I'm going to start by turning the dial to the smallest voltmeter setting, 200 millivolts. Putting the leads on my battery terminal shows us two things. First, that the reading is off the scale, no surprises there, and that I've got my leads the wrong way around, as in the positive lead, the red one that I'm using, is touching the negative terminal of the battery. That's why we've got a minus one on the screen. Swapping the leads round shows us that reading is still off the scale, but at least we've got the leads the right way around this time. If I didn't have any idea what my battery voltage was, or could be, I would turn the dial up a notch and test again, as I show here, until... BOSH! My multimeter shows me that my battery has potential difference 9.33 volts. Swapping the leads round shows the same thing, but negative, and changing the scale on the multimeter gives me the same result, only to a different precision. Be sure to change the settings to get as many significant figures in your reading as possible. Here I try a 1.5 volt AAA battery. It's clearly past its best with only 785 millivolts. That's 0.785 volts, potential difference across it. Next up, we've got a resistor. Can't remember what the color codes mean, but it doesn't matter because I've got a multimeter. Still using the bottom two inputs, 
I just twist the dial to the ohmmeter section to measure the resistance. Since I'm measuring a boring resistor, it doesn't really matter which way around I have the cables. Once again, I see that with nothing plugged in, my multimeter reading is off the scale. I can check everything's working by completing the circuit and touching the ends together. See how it drops to 0 0.6 ohm? Perfect lead should give me zero, and this non-zero reading could mean a couple of things, not just that the cables are a bit dodgy. It could mean that dirt on the ends mean I haven't got a good electrical contact, or maybe even that the multimeter itself isn't calibrated properly. We'll worry about that another time. For now, I'll test my resistor. 119, pretty much 120 ohm. Notice how I can get more precise readings depending on what setting I've turned the dial to. Lastly, if I want to measure current, I just turn the dial to one of the ammeter settings and use the ends of the leads to complete my circuit of choice. A bit like this. At this point, I realise I should probably get some more electronics equipment so I can connect it all up and demo it for you properly. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful. Feel free to like, share and subscribe. First thing to remember about using an uh, uh what's this thing again?